Hey everyone, another episode of Who Should You Choose, the video series where I go through the prior videos, questions, and comments, and help you with your hut lineup decisions. Again, you want to make sure that you are subscribed with notifications on to make sure you get your question answered in the next video. Let's get after it. Sorry for the delay between videos, by the way, guys. Just got really busy this week. Uh, so, let's uh, let's take a look. Starting out with uh, Chartier. First, also, every sleeves video is my cozy fireplace moment. Thanks for the content. That might be the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. Okay, okay. Uh, yo, Sleeves, will there ever be a trade-in set for Fantasy Corey Perry? Nah, I knew that was coming. I bought one thing there would be, uh, like there was for Evander Kane last year, but I haven't seen any yet. Also, was wondering if you think X-Factor Eichel is better than X-Factor Point. Love the videos. Keep up the good work. Eichel is one of the best X-Factors in the game. His card just plays different. Uh, he has a custom skating stride. He is fast. He's big. Everything you need. He is one of the only X factors that would actually upgrade um, outside of like McDavid and McCarr. Uh, in terms of Corey Perry, tough one. The fantasy cards are meant to be a gamble. Um, he wasn't a master set player. He wasn't injured. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't be surprised either way. I wouldn't bank on it. Let me tell you that. Hey, Slaves, I appreciate all the help and videos and loving the streams when I can tune in. My question is regarding X-Factor Doughty. I have him at 84 with him popping off to an 88. He's a 90 now. Is it worth it to upgrade him now or hold and see if he stays hot and passes a lot of other right-handed defensemen? His stats look decent at 88, but not overwhelming. I'm a D3 player with 300K. Yes, I think that uh, Doughty's X-Factor is actually pretty good uh, in terms of his abilities. Uh, I can't stand Doughty, but, uh, you know, that is what it is. Uh in terms of his card, definitely one of the ones that you want to upgrade. Like the fantasy X Factor, like the fantasy cards that have X Factor cards. This is why I was telling you guys to hold on to them, because obviously you have to pay to upgrade. But if he scores another goal, gets it at like ninety two, you've got the highest rated defenseman available to you. Hi right, sleeves, should I sell my tradable Mario or keep him? Oh, I think it's keep him. Because as of now, you can build him, or you can buy him for much cheaper than it costs to build him. So, gold NHLers are going between 800 and 1,000 coins. So that means that he's roughly going to cost you a million, right? You can only sell him for like seven to 800, maybe 900,000 coins. And then what are you going to go buy? There isn't many better cards, so I would just keep him. Bonjour Father, this guy says. X-Factor, Jack Hughes, Doughty, and GOG Gretzky. Who should I put on the first line? Je uh, no, X-Factor McDavid. McDavid, much like Eichel, has a custom stride. He's just different. I or Jack Hughes, however, is a meta card this year. Uh, the amount of players in Division One and Hut Champs that I've seen use that Jack Hughes, which is surprising because he's small. He's just so much faster than everyone. Good day, Sleeves. Hope all is well. Hope all is weak. <laughs> well, I am getting older. Now the new team is out. Who's the best option to replace New and Dyke? Mostly because of the face on advantage. Thanks, homie. This is tough because the real center that we got was Medano. He's better on the wing. If you really need a face off guy, I would just go and make uh, Messier with your free collectibles. Hey, Sleeves. Hope you're good. Who are your predictions for team of the year? Okay, as it stands right now, oh, God. McDavid. It's just so hard to keep Kucherov off. Kucherov and Dreisaitl? I mean, they've had such a rough start. But their their last year was so good. Forward's up in the air. Defenseman, I think it's Eric Carlson and Makar or Quinn Hughes, one of the two. Or should have an 88 power icon. 1,000% agree, agree with you. I right, slaves... I have about 400k and a decent team for who I like. Is it just me, or does this game feel like it's slowing down way too fast this year? Nonetheless, I have six to eight team builders with not much left to make the other two. Uh, and thoughts keep going with the vids and being a good dad. Appreciate that, buddy. So, it, yeah, I mean, we played the game more than it's intended to be played. This goes for every video game, essentially, especially yearly sports games. We play them far more than they're intended to be played, and they're engineered, not just NHL, all sports games, to make you want to keep playing, meaning that even if you're having fun or not, it's they all give you the sense of, I need to keep playing. If you lose, 
You need to keep playing. If you win, you can't end on a heater. It's all engineered to just keep you playing. And um, the problem with that is that the dopamine hit every time that you get a win or keep playing the game is much less because you're just getting so much of it. So, uh, yeah, it does feel like that. Uh, I totally get it. In terms of team builders, keep grinding to get them. All six of them are incredible. I don't save too much for team of the year. I wait till the events start before anything. It's a two-week event, so I feel it's plenty of time to figure out how much to acquire one, two, or three. I'll be honest with you, man. If you're free to play and you're just getting weekly rewards, if you haven't prepared at all, you can maybe get one. Uh, like the, the person commenting or replying here, the, the cards that you use to make them will just explode in price. You have to understand that January is the highest month of the player base meaning that it is the time where the most of the player base plays which is crazy it's not the launch month it's january all the christmas noobs we call them it is going to be a mess so while i don't think you need to save for months going all the way to the event and expecting three is an absolute long shot Hey, Sleeves, I'm really enjoying Hut this year as a new player and switching over from FIFA. Wow, I'd love to hear that. Um, where working the market was super competitive and dynamic, which gave me a great experience for maneuvering through NHL's market. Only problem now is that I've basically gotten everything I want. 887s, 1284s, 99 and 66, X-Factor, McDavid, and Hughes. And this is where the slowing down of content and lack of daily content, where FIFA is more engaging, makes playing the game a bit more boring. Do you have any personal ideas to change this for future titles? Or even within NHL 24. Alternatively, the only thing left for me to do is get him a car and Jack Hughes from the X Factor pack. But again, that's a cooldown. So I'm all, all I'm working towards is gathering golds and fodder for the next month as well, which is easy. Thanks for again, and I blame you for getting me into hut. Let's go, buddy. Well, first of all, welcome in. Second of all, when it comes to changing content, the first thing I would get rid of is, let's say, the start of the year. Any team of the year, live moment or team of the team of the week, live moment, milestone, transaction, any sort of card, I would immediately make the minimum an 82 overall, uh, and then every month I would go up by one. So we're in December right now. Any team of the week or live moment card should be 84 at minimum um, to at least have a shot to make your team. I would also love to see more individual cards uh, in terms of attributes. So. If you've got, let's say, 500 ability or attribute points to, to dole out and every ability need, or every attribute needs to be at least minimum 60, go from there. Like, if Couture, for example, Logan Couture, sorry, if Tomash Hurdle, it's early, I'm sorry, boys. Lo, uh, Tomash Hurdle had a bunch of comebacks this week for the Sharks, which is crushing my dreams of Macklin Celebrini. But that being said, like, for his comeback, he had two goals in the final few minutes of the game to tie the game um, in the uh, on Long Island. So I would love to see a card where he's got maybe like 95 shooting, gold close quarters because both of the goals were right in the crease, silver-born leader, and, you know, maybe like 90 skating or something. Along those lines, make him want to be bought or, or, or purchased by making him a little more customizable. They release far less cards than they do uh, weekly now, so there's no reason why they can't just take a once-over and just move the attribute points around. So I would, that's where I would start. Haven't received Hut Champs collectibles all year. I've been contacting EA for weeks to no avail. Any idea of anyone else having a problem? Tough to get fodder power collectibles. Yeah, have you gone to click on Hut Champs and then you'll get you'll see the season screen? Hold down L2 and go to completed seasons. Any of the ones with a star on it, click on it and you'll get your rewards. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, it sounds like yeah, it sounds like you might just be in the wrong place, boss. Hey, Sleeps. I uh, love the tips and tricks videos. Makes Hut much more enjoyable, so thanks for that. Uh, I currently have 250,000 coins. I'm looking for a top-end left or right winger. I have been initially saving up for a house power by icon, but also noticed that McDavid's team of the week instead. Who do you think I should go for? Do you have any other suggestions? Looking at competitive side, as I'm a Devils fan, and I already have plenty of my favorite Devils on my team, thanks again. There will always be a better McDavid card to chase. Gordy Howe, at least you know, will always go up plus one overall, be among the highest rated in the game, and one of the better cards. So I would recommend uh, getting Gordy Howe. Just wondering what you think EA could do to fix content. Game is feeling dull. What players would you like to see get a top tier MSP? The problem with MSPs and events is that they always use players that are not 
the best in the game currently. So McDavid, Matthews, those kind of guys, for example, because they know they're going to get their prime times, their live moment cards, so they tend to not give them um, give them MSPs. I think the issue with MSPs is that they can't upgrade. I think that they should go up plus one overall each month so that you can continue using them. But that would impact EA's bottom dollar and, and business decisions because then you could just, you know, have a bunch of MSPs from early on in the year and just keep upgrading them as opposed to chasing the new card, which is why you don't. Um, in terms of new content, like, it's tough. Like, like I said, a minimum for the new cards that come out, like Team of the Week and, and, and Live Moments is where I would start for sure. Is Coffee and Shell dead? No, I mean, we do one, one episode a week, every Tuesday night roughly, so Wednesday it'll be on. Uh, Ace Sleeves, hope you're doing good. Should I spend my coins on buying back, buying team builders or stacking up my collection with 83, 84 team of the year? I have Breeze Wan, New and Dick. Um, it's tough because we're raiding. I would not buy any team builder cards for under for more than 1,300 coins. So use that. New and Dyke will be better player in April. I don't know what you're referring to because it's in the prior video. Sorry. Should I should be up to at least 93 overall for S tier and 91, 92 for great, and then so forth. The team builders be at least 90. You're getting trapped in like the overall. The they may be 90 overalls, but these cards are maxed out in what you are what you would find important in a card. The team builder cards are 99 meta. So, like just because they say 90 overall, forget about that. A sleeve. Should I buy or should I sell Evo Barzell for over a million? Bought it for 500k. Yes. And should and use it to build the Mew and buy how? Yes. I already have. I have already built Gretzky, and I have five of six new ninety team build. Actually, yes, a million coins. Yes, five of six new team new ninety overall. I have five of six new team builders, but also got eighty eight Louis from the free pack earlier. I've always liked Barzal cards, but it still takes time to get him number one or two right in wingers. Should I keep Barzal and build the Mew slower because I have the eighty eight version of him? Oh, you have the eighty eight Mew. Like, at 99, he's going to go for a million coins. Unless he keeps going and he gets there early. Like, a million coins is pretty solid. Used to play FIFA Ultimate Team and newer to Hockey Ultimate Team. FIFA started doing things like 83 plus X3 to allow players to have a better chance at getting better cards. Uh, these would be built from squads with different types of players like divisions and leagues. Do you think something like that would work at Hockey Ultimate Team and help getting cards like the 88 Hughes? Yeah, I could see that. Uh, I think there should be a Team of the Week pack. Like, I think Team of the Week and Live Moment cards have no feel or interest at all. Like, they're just fodder for the most part outside of the highest overall. So, like, there's no balance. It's like, okay, the new 89 McDavid came out. He's the best McDavid in the game. He's unbelievable. This is great. This is a change from prior years where you would pretty much sell every Team of the Week card that came out. The issue is, is that the rest of the cards are like 80 overalls. So that needs to be addressed. Um, I would love a pack where, let's say, in, in squad battles or something, where you can get a team of the week pack with a guaranteed team of the week pool. I think that would go a long way. We were good. We got a long one. What were they thinking, honestly? Me, I can't win a face-off at all. Not once. I've learned the controls, but I still can't win them. I can't play past rookie and win a face-off. I can score, but I can't win face-offs. It's so dumb. And then you go to try and play a Rivals game, and boom, we put up against these guys with 86, 87, 80 teams. Where I have a solid one. Okay, so this is a long one. I'm just going to answer the face-off question. All right, man. Um, you might know the counters, but check your ping. You might, be on a, you might be on a higher ping. Notice when the ref moves his hand. Also, if you're really struggling, go and use a gold quick draw player like Neuendijk or a silver quick draw player like Marc Messier. The face-off rating matters. So I would I would try uh, I would try and go there. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this episode of Who Should You Choose. Make sure you get your questions in for the next episode. Thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you next time.